up, Level Up Nation, and welcome to the June 9th edition of Level Up Live, your home for gaming and esports news, brought to you by OTN Media. My name is Fiasco, you can call me John, and tonight I am not only joined once again for twice in one day, uh, but uh, you know him, you love him, maybe you don't, I don't know, I, I, I can't tell you what to do, but his name is the king of the courtside, he's the courtside king, his name is also known as Joey, what's up buddy? Yes, absolutely it is, John. We had a great co-stream earlier today and so many more games to talk about tonight, but I'm not the only one joining you tonight. We do have a special guest as well. Go ahead and introduce him, too. Coming to us live all the way from high on top of Rocky Top, it's Walker TN, a.k.a. Drew. What's up, buddy? What is up, guys? Thank you for having me once again. Oh, as always, thanks for taking time out of your day, hanging out with us, talking some, some video games. Uh, Nation, if you are not aware and you are living under the uh, rock called uh, life, uh, <laughs> today was Summer Games Fest. So tonight is going to be Level Up Live's uh, special Summer Games Fest recap show. Uh, we're we're going to be doing a lot of talking. We're going to be doing a lot of video watching. We're going to do a lot of trailer watching. We're going to have a lot of opinions flying left and right. Uh, and that's what we want to hear from you also. Join us here in chat live on Twitch as always. Uh, for live shows, get your opinion heard. Get your opinions on the record, because chances are we'll, we'll read them for the podcast as well. Nation, while you're doing that, make sure you follow the show on Twitter and Facebook at Level Up Live. That is at LVLUP Live. And while you're on Twitter, you might as well follow us. I mean, all three of us, you have extra homework. We're going to call it extra credit today. You got to follow me at Fiasco, Joey at Courtside King, and Drew at Walker TN15. It's 15 on Twitter, correct? Okay, cool. Awesome. That's like, correct. I was like, okay, cool. Awesome. There we go. And also, uh, Nation, the live show on Twitch is the best place to catch a show, but have no fear. If you can't catch it, we do have a podcast version of the show called the Level Up Podcast. Your podcatcher of choice. All you have to go is all you have to do is go to the search function, type in Level Up Podcast, and guess what? We're there. You can listen to us on any podcatcher you would like. Extra credit also times two, patreon.com slash OTN. If you want to give us more money, fine, go for it. We're not going to complain. Uh, your views, your love, your downloads are enough, though, but so don't feel any pressure for that. All right, Joey, um, since it's a special show, I, I guess we already know what we're talking about, but can you give us a little bit of a teaser here on uh, what topics we're going to be talking about today? Yeah, guys, we're talking about a lot. First things first, we're going to touch on Summer Game Fest. It happened earlier today. Some of you joined John and I for the co-stream of that. Uh, there were, I don't know, 40, 50 some game announcements, I feel like that came in in some shape or size. So we'll be touching on a number of those, not all of them, obviously, for time's sake. And then from there, we're going to look at the next seven days or so ahead of different showcases, Capcom, Xbox, Bethesda, and so much more. Uh, we have a little bit of a prediction game that's being made. I don't know how much John and Drew know about that, but we'll be looking at that a little bit. And then we'll be diving into some other hopes, dreams, and other thoughts about some of those showcases to come. Oh, we're, we're in a has, has to be hopes and dreams about the showcases. It can't just be hopes and dreams. It has to be. Okay. I mean, you can give us some hopes and dreams too. Uh, what you're aspiring to be, John. You like long walks on the beach, maybe. We can talk about all that too. I, I, I enjoy naps, uh, especially after long shows. Uh, Nation, we have our topics. We know exactly what we're talking about today, but we cannot start, of course. We have to talk about the drink of choice, the beverage that's going to aid us through the entire show. Uh, you know what? We're gonna let the guests go first. Uh, Drewby Dooby Doo, what are you sipping on, my sir? Well, uh, being a little healthier, I do have my water bottle here, but uh, on the on the other side, I have some Dalmore 12 year scotch single barrel. 12 year, wow, there you what go. a gentleman! You know what, gentleman and a scholar. Uh, that is way too classy for this show. I'm gonna need you to leave now. All right, sorry, uh, good to see you guys. Have <laughs> see fun. Bye. Uh, Joey, um, I'm gonna need you to one up Drew's classiness because he has taken this, uh, he's leveled up, level up. I didn't think it was possible, but somehow he managed to do it. Uh, so you're up next. Well, Drew has two drinks, I have three tonight. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, I have a Trader Joe's sparkling blueberry lemonade water. I have my normal 20, 30 ounce water bottle. And then we're back to Aslan, boys. Uh, we have, you call that a knife. It's a double IPA from Aslan. Big fan of it. So we are drinking that tonight as well. Fabulous. Um, I helped a friend move this past weekend. And uh, one of the things he did not want in his fridge was the gigantic collection of hard seltzers he had. Um, and I didn't realize this because I haven't had this in forever uh, apparently mike's hard lemonade makes a seltzer now uh oh. so so it is uh 
high school drinking behind my parents back time in a can. Uh, we're we're going to relive those moments by having Mike's Hard Lemonade again. Have no fear. Also have the bottle of water here. Uh, two drinks because um, I will not need to have to run to the bathroom in the middle of the show now because of it. So uh, everyone else has three drinks. I wish you the best of luck for the next uh, 60 to 90 minutes. All right. We have our topics. We have our beverages. Joey, kick us off. Let, let's let the marathon flow. Absolutely. I love that you're going with kicking to start things off, John, because that's exactly what we're talking about. Street Fighter Six. It was initially debuted a little while ago uh, at a, I believe it was an Evo event, if I remember correctly. And then from there, we saw more gameplay footage in the Sony state of play at the beginning of June. But now we have our first character reveal, or at least our first formal one with Guile coming out. Uh, this one looks pretty good to me, boys. What do you think? Drew, go ahead. Take us away, guest. Uh, so it looked really good. Um, I'm going to be honest. Street Fighter was never my go to fighting game. I was definitely more of a Mortal Kombat kid, um, but it's it looks great. I, I can get in and mash some buttons and, and punch some people in the face. I I'm just loving the how it looks like they're really leaning into the, the next generation of consoles and, and just how great it looked. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. There are definitely graphical improvements. And John, I know you're also a big Mortal Kombat fan, giving us the old finish him during the showcase earlier. Uh, what are your thoughts on Street Fighter Six so far? Uh, yeah, just to reiterate what I said on our uh, co-stream, you know, the one thing I love about fighting games, about how they've lasted the the test of time, if you will, um, you know, Street Fighter's been around since, you know, I believe it's the late 1980s, early 1990s was when it really made its initial impact. And now here we are in 2022, and this game is still relevant. There's still a, a diehard fan base. It's a growing fan base. The the fighter community is is incredible. Um, and somehow, even with the advances of technology, they're able to keep uh, these new versions of these games true to the original. It has that feel, but it has that polished look of next gen consoles, of the current power of gaming PCs. And I think that's one of the the the, the great things about technology is being able to mix that retro with the present day technology and, and put out uh, this game that old school gamers who have played the OG Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2, back on the arcade version of the game, uh, still recognize the game. They still recognize their characters. They still will want to play it. Meanwhile, present day generations, millennials and Gen Z who have grown up with Street Fighter have kind of seen it grow and mature as well. Uh, now have that opportunity to, con to continue playing a fighter game that they have known uh, and see it grow and kind of get more polished and just advanced. I mean, that, that's, one, that's, that's the biggest takeaway for me with Street Fighter from what we saw today. Yeah, for sure. And I think with all of us kind of leaning more toward that Mortal Kombat side, the other thing to keep in mind is Street Fighter is one of the biggest titles when it comes to esports. Uh, that alongside Tekken are both extremely big scenes. So knowing that, seeing this gameplay, seeing how that will eventually elevate the esports scene as well, I think is another good takeaway from this early kickoff to the Summer Game Fest kickoff show. Next up, guys, we moved into a genre that we saw a lot of during the afternoon showcase. Uh, there was a lot of space games and a lot of space thriller slash horror games in particular. We saw, I would say, four to five of them throughout the showcase. And the next two were back to back. It's Aliens Dark Descent. This one coming later in 2023 followed by the Callisto Protocol, uh, which pretty much looked like a spiritual successor to Dead Space as well. Callisto coming out just slightly ahead of Aliens in 2022. Aliens again 2023, and somewhere in that mix, you also have the Dead Space remake uh, sometime January 2023. Uh, John, over to you first on this one. I know you've given us all your thoughts on zombies and all that. What are your thoughts on Aliens and all these games coming to the platform of your choice? You know, but prior to today's show, I had no problem with Aliens. After today's show, I'm gonna need them to stop. Uh, <laughs> there were just way too many, too many games with space and aliens and the space alien horror genre. Like, look, I get it. It's great. It's fun. Like, it felt like we had 20 of them. It felt like half the show was this genre. And normally, I think it's fine. Um, my issue is anytime you have a lot of similar games being announced, especially in one showcase, they all kind of lose that flair. They lose that edge because, let's be honest here, 
you can only do space and aliens and horror all packed together so many times, and it's very hard to make it unique. That's kind of one of the biggest critiques we have about Battle Royale games. It's very hard to stand out from the other Battle Royale games. The same thing you have with zombie games. It's very hard to stand out from other zombie games. And that's what we kind of saw here. While these games, story-wise, sound great. Graphically, look absolutely amazing. The biggest issue is, is trying to separate them and how they all stand out ind individually to the casual gamer. Obviously, the hardcore gamer is going to be able to nitpick things here and there, and that's completely fine. But at the end of the day, the casual gamer is the largest gaming population in, in the world, and that's how you have to kind of market these games. How is my game going to stand apart from the five others that just got announced in the exact same showcase? So we'll keep touching on some of these alien games, but Drew, over to you, between Aliens, Dark Descent, and the Callisto Protocol, which one stood out to you the most in two games that look very similar? Um, well, yes, they look similar in that they're both in outer space and they're horror, but they're two very different games as far as I could tell. And personally, I think Aliens, Dark Descent looked a little more interesting to me just because the alien is a very familiar, uh, very familiar uh, antagonist. And that's a world we've explored, and I'm hoping they're going to do something more interesting with it again, like they did with Isolation, which was a very cool game. Um, and as great as the Callisto Protocol is probably going to be, and I'll probably end up playing it, that grotesque body horror type of enemy just isn't something that I'm looking to spend a lot of time with. But I could, I could hunt some aliens over and over and over again it'd be fine so they both look great though now the the callista protocol was that the one that had the alien biting off 80 percent of that dude's head in, in, yeah in the it went very yes. demogorgon like yeah, yeah um yes. i i think that was the um the oh crap moment uh of the entire show was when the alien literally unhinged its jaw and like chomped 80 percent of a dude's head off um i mean good for the alien uh bad for the dude uh that's yeah, right on <laughs> that that's was not expecting that. that that was that was pretty graphic and i loved it yeah it got a little juicy there for a bit um overall i think the callisto protocol uh, for those fans of dead space that's going to be the way you're going to gravitate for sure uh, i believe a lot of the dev team behind that was behind the original dead space trilogy as well so a lot of crossover there from gameplay elements to some of the enemies you'll see i'm sure there's plenty of creativity coming out though as well and again you can check that one out later this year december 2022 Moving forward, but sticking with the space genre, because we're going to hit it all up front here. Uh, the next one, Drew, I know drew your attention, and that's Fort Solas. This is another space-themed game, but it's starring Troy Baker and Roger Clark. I mean, that's exactly what sold me on it. I think pretty much anything that Troy Baker is involved with ends up being pretty fantastic. He's an awesome voice actor. He likes to really get involved in the creative process of these games. Uh, he and Roger Clark seem to have some good uh, chemistry together, which I think should be a lot of fun as well. And it was, just looked very intriguing like they said he when they were talking about it they described it as a a tight thriller and as much as i love open world games and games that are big and expansive and have these huge environments and all this stuff to explore there is something very satisfying about playing a nice tight story that keeps you on the edge of your seat the whole time and suddenly you've played you know whatever eight ten hours of this story without even realizing it and just at the end you're exhausted and, and satisfied with the way the story concluded so i'm i'm excited for for something like that that's in a, a sci-fi world because that, I dig it. And then, John, over to you. The one that followed that was Space Thriller, another one in the genre, Routine. Uh, this one's a little bit creepier. You're going through almost, it felt like a subway tunnel. As you continue on, you turn and find like this robotic-style alien over there. Yeah, um, again, <laughs> this was another one of those weird trailers that we saw. I believe, uh, Drew, I don't know if it was you. Someone put Somebody put poutine in the chat during the, uh, the co-stream, uh, which which caught my caught me off guard and made me giggle a little bit. Uh, it was not me. It was not you. Okay. Well, I was I was going to give you credit if 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 it wasn't. But um yeah, th this one definitely has more of that uh that horror feel to it. It looks like it has a lot more jump scares. Um as someone who does not enjoy being jump scared in real life, I don't think this game would do well for me because I'd probably throw my controller at the TV, which is not what you want to do. Um but yeah, I think it looks great. I think, again, if you're a fan of this genre, you'll be uh, really excited. I remember watching this live, uh, you know, for those here on Twitch with us watching the uh, the uh, trailer right now. And this, this moment exactly, actually, where you can see that robotic alien on the other side of, like, this barricade. 
And then all of a sudden, it's like you hear something, you turn around, and oh, he's right there behind you. Look, this honestly looks like a Terminator kind of game. In all honesty, uh, it kind of has like that 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 Terminator like robot feel. But yeah, routine. It, it, it looks cool. I want to know more about it. Um, but from what we saw, I, I thought it was I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, the music though is fantastic so far in that in that trailer. Can only wait to see what they have uh, when it comes to. Um, the actual game itself. I, I like AI as the bad guy here instead yes. of grotesque aliens of some sort. There's plenty of that in play in the rest of the games, but AI is a scary villain because it's a very plausible villain with the way things are going for us. Super realistic. Absolutely. I mean, and I, I think that's one of the things like you mentioned, like that's what makes it even scarier is like ever since for those of us old enough to remember Y2K, uh, the whole thing was, oh, the computers are going to go down on us. They're going to malfunction. They're, they're going to, uh, you know, possibly the, the missiles are all going to launch at midnight because the computers don't know what's going on. Uh, this is kind of like that scenario put into a video game. But 20, 21, 22 years later, uh, and it's like we've seen how far AI and computers have come in that short time span of human history. And now it's like, you know what? It's it's kind of believable. Computers malfunction. Uh, I remember uh, my sister had a Roomba. The Roomba malfunctioned and started chasing people around the house. So, you know, that's a possibility. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think that's what makes it even scarier is that it is more realistic than uh, aliens coming in a UFO and jump scaring a bunch of people in their living rooms. You knew a good sister about John or a good story about John's sister had to make the special edition Absolutely, show as well. Right? Absolutely nice appearance there. So we've gone through four of the space games, guys. Uh, this next one takes a bit more of a turn. Still in space. Still plenty of gory combat, but it's a much more well-known series, and that's Warhammer 40K Dark Tide, uh, an award-winning co-op shooter. Tons of Warhammer games out there, a big following alongside it. This one launching September 13th and also launching directly into Xbox Game Pass. Uh, Drew, have you ever gotten involved in the Warhammer franchise? I see you cheering over there. I got a buddy at work who's really big into the miniatures game. Um, he tried to get me into that with him, but I'm way too impatient to do any sort of model building or painting. But the lore is really interesting. The, that world is interesting. Uh, and I did try out Vermintide, and that was a pretty fun game. So this looks really cool. Um, I think it'll be a great way to dive into that lore and experience it without having to spend hours and hours and hundreds of dollars painting some plastic. Um, kudos to you if you've got the time and patience to do that. It's really cool, but I do not. But I love the the franchise, and that lore is incredibly confusing and awesome. Time, patience, and money. Those little figurines, they add up. And on top of that, you're buying the paint, you're buying the boards. It is an expensive hobby, but a very cool one indeed. For those who are not going to paint figurines, though, you can dive into this gory action alongside Fiasco, maybe? John, what are your thoughts on Warhammer 40K? <laughs> yeah, I I'm there with Drew. I, I think the lore and uh, the, the lore is great. I applaud those who play the tabletop version because it is a very expensive hobby and a very time consuming hobby. And like Drew, I do not have the patience for it. Uh, so, so Drew, I, I feel you on that. Uh, I struggle with the tabletop game that I'm currently playing with some friends at the moment because I'm very impatient. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I think it looks great. Like if you are not wanting to get into the tabletop version of the game, maybe you're like, Okay, I want to know what my friend sees in the tabletop game. I want to learn a little bit more about the lore, a little bit more about the world. Uh, that is Warhammer. These video games are are perfect for it because guess what? You don't have to paint these these figures in game. Uh, there might be some character customization. You never know. And if you're like me, that will take you 20 hours just to get through customizing how your character looks uh, before you even get to the gameplay. Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, it, it's a great opportunity to dive into the world of Warhammer through a video game. Uh, that is not going to cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars or painting plastic figurines. There you go. Save your money. Try the electronic version or try that $1 sub to Game Pass. You can go check that out when it drops again later this year in September. Next up on our agenda, boys, it was a long look, somewhere around four to five minutes of gameplay of the Modern Warfare 2 campaign. For the veterans of the Modern Warfare series, if you remember all the way back to Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, the original real kickoff to Modern Warfare for the Call of Duty series, there was a map, or I believe it was a mission as well, called Wetwork. Uh, this definitely had Wetwork vibes to it. You're on an oil rig style ship. There's shipping containers all around. 
It's raining. Go figure. Wet work, rain, and just kind of layers together. Uh, overall, the graphics getting a bit criticized here. I'll say they're not incredibly impressive. But from what I've heard, this is also alpha footage. It's still early on. The polishing is still coming before the release in October. From what I saw, minus the graphics that need a little bit of polishing, I think the gameplay looks good. The gunplay looks good. The water animation, pretty solid. Uh, the faces in particular, and chat mentioned this during the co-stream, look really good to me as well. John, over to you. As someone who's dabbled some with Call of Duty, but it's never been a huge franchise for you, what are your thoughts on Modern Warfare 2, and do you plan on diving in? Yeah, I'll probably end up getting Modern Warfare 2. Um, I, I, I Personally, I thought the trailer looked great. Uh, I'll, I'll be completely honest. I, I think we as gamers are getting a little too nitpicky when it comes to, to graphics, uh, especially in trailers and gameplay announcement videos, uh, because let's be real here, at the end of the day, like you said, Joey, this was alpha footage. They're not going to put that out there. Like, if I was to pay full price of $60 for this game, I'll be honest, I'm completely satisfied with the graphics I see on screen. I'm not going to be the person that sits here and absolutely slams a game because one blade of grass might look a little bit more square on the end than it does round. Uh, I, I feel like people are just getting a little little too comfortable hiding behind their, their keyboard and their uh, cell phone. Uh, putting these criticisms out there. I mean, the, these are multi-million dollar games that take years to develop and fine-tune. Uh, let's take a look at Modern Warfare or any Call of Duty from 10 years ago and compare it to this trailer right now. Uh, it's a massive improvement for 10 years. So as far as I'm concerned, I was completely satisfied with this. I love the gameplay footage. Uh, it definitely has that Modern Warfare Call of Duty feel to it. Everything about it, from the level style to the... Uh, to the guns, to how it looks like everything uh, works mechanically in game, uh, it it feels like I said on the code stream like a Call of Duty game. Obviously, we'll find out once we have the controller in our hand playing the game or mouse and keyboard. We'll definitely get that better feel for it. Uh, but I was super happy with it, and I think a lot of people should be super happy with it because it's exactly what uh, Call of Duty fans want to see in this trailer. Yeah, absolutely. You showcase some clamor here as well, climbing up on different crates. There's some other mechanics they didn't show, like swimming is supposedly in here as well, uh, as well as some others that they haven't quite revealed as of yet. Again, the water looks fantastic to me. I think that's one of the coolest parts, the containers moving as well. Uh, Drew, as someone who's dabbled with Call of Duty yourself, what are your thoughts on this campaign reveal? I think it looks amazing. Um, the, modern, the original Modern Warfare 2 was probably the last Call of Duty that I really dove into and played the campaign and the multiplayer for a significant amount of time. I've dabbed in a couple of the other ones since then, but this looks amazing. Um, I'm going to echo exactly what John said, that like there's a very vocal minority of people on the interwebs that uh, get very upset about things like a couple missed frames or, yeah, some the, the water's not reflective enough or something insane like that. I think of the puddles from the Spider-Man game that people freaked out about getting removed from the game because they said it, the the theory was that it couldn't handle it graphically. Like people are insane. I think this looks awesome. The action looks intense. Uh, I have a feeling that um, someone's going to get blown up by the end of this, that we don't want to get blown up. So uh, I'm, I'm stoked. I'll be playing. I'll say this real quick. Be mad about Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie's original draft of Sonic the Hedgehog with the human teeth. That was really creepy. That you can be mad about. You can't be mad about puddles being removed or blades of grass in a video game or a trailer that was shot from alpha footage. That, that's a little ridiculous. Be, be upset about the things that shouldn't be bad, like Sonic the Hedgehog looking like a man and a hedgehog were hybrid, like, put together. It was really creepy, but other than that, yeah. <laughs> now, I will say, like, the blades of grass thing, sure, don't get that angry, but we have seen things where gamers have spoken out and changed things, like Halo Infinite, for example. Those graphics greatly improved. Now, sure, polishing was still planned, but I think because people spoke up, they changed that style even a bit more aggressively than they were planning to. So I think it's okay to say things. Again, I wouldn't be worried here. I think there's plenty of polishing still to go, and it has, like, 10 studios working on it, plus other support studios as well, so... It'll look fantastic when it does eventually come out. And again, guys, are you playing Call of Duty to look at the puddles or are you playing for the gunplay? And I think that's something else to keep in mind here as well. This game should be fantastic. And I think it'll go on to be the highest selling Call of Duty game of all time. It gets Next, the launch uh, of. Yep, go ahead. It gets the launch of the new Warzone as well, right? Isn't yes, Warzone 2. Yeah, so that'll those two things together. Yeah, hands down. And we could touch on that a little bit. Uh, they haven't really revealed much, so I don't know how much we should say yet. 
Um, some stuff has started to leak. There's going to be strongholds involved on the new Warzone map. And for those who watched the initial reveal trailer back on June 8th, yeah, June 8th, uh, is when they actually showed the Warzone map. So if you go through that trailer, you will see parts of the Warzone map in there. Uh, it hasn't fully been revealed, but there's some nice little teasers. And on top of that, these strongholds are going to be kind of your high loot areas, and they're going to be controlled by NPCs. So not only do you have to go up against Drew's squad to go get crowned as the winner, winner, chicken dinner, you also have to take on these NPCs if you want to risk yourself for some of this higher tier loot. Should be fun when that eventually drops later this year. Next up on the radar is a smaller studio. It's an indie, guys, and we have a heart for indies here at OTN. This one debuted their new IP, Stormgate, from Frost Giant Studios, a studio made up of a bunch of Blizzard developers, veterans of the industry, known mostly for their work on StarCraft and StarCraft II, as well as the Warcraft universe with RTS games. Uh, some really cool stuff coming out here. Unfortunately, just a CGI trailer for now, but let's take a look at Stormgate. <laughs> yeah, give me a second. I pulled up the wrong video. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Drew, let's turn it over to you then. What are your thoughts on Stormgate? I'm a huge RTS fan. What about yourself? Uh, RTSs are one of those game styles that I didn't get into until uh, I was probably in college. In fact, I'm pretty sure I got a questionably legal copy of starcraft from uh viking bear in chat there um and that was really some of my first exposure to it uh, but i think it's a great genre and i really enjoyed it um i would be excited to play it now that i actually have a network of people that would play it along with me and so don't feel like that i'm just playing it on my own and getting zergling rushed by the computer every time so Love it. John, what race did you play in StarCraft and what excites you the most of this new IP from Frost Giant? Uh, StarCraft, I was a Protoss guy. Uh, Protoss all the way. Uh, the sound of the droid in this trailer definitely sounds like a probe droid from the Protoss race in StarCraft. Uh, and why wouldn't it? I mean, it's it's by some of the the, the brains behind StarCraft. And that's, what we, that's what I kind of feel like we saw in this trailer is we got a little bit of of the new version of the Zerg uh, from Frost Giant. We got the new version of the Terran, uh, especially in their um, uh, heavy machinery outfit that we're going to see here in a little bit on the trailer. Uh, and then the, uh, not really Protoss E or anything like that, uh, other than the droid that we saw in here and the one sound clip so far. Uh, but the trailer looks great. Granted, it's not gameplay. It does give us a little, uh, kind of a little background of what this game is going to entail. Uh, so I think that's really, really cool. Um, it, it's definitely a studio we've watched uh, ever since they announced. And then obviously with RTS, with with a lot of people being RTS fans, Joe, you and I included, and Drew, uh, you know, it's it's definitely one we're keeping an eye on. And I think this trailer hit the mark the way it should have. And I think the hype around uh, RTS is really making a, a, a comeback uh, is, is justified. And, and this definitely has me excited. I'm about to type this in chat, but I think this is free to play as well, if I remember correctly from the trailer and the announcement afterwards. So definitely one to look forward to. I'm curious to see how they do layer those microtransactions in. Hopefully mainly cosmetic as some people are starting to trend more too. Uh, but then on the flip side, you do have stuff like FIFA that is pretty much pay to win when it comes to Ultimate Team. We'll have to wait and see on that. But overall, I think the dev team is strong. I think the creativity is definitely there. And so far, I mean, this definitely looks like StarCraft meets Warcraft to me. You have the Terran Protoss looking side, but then you also have something that looks almost like a demon hunter from WoW. Um, overall, I'm curious to see how it develops and what the other races look like when they're eventually unveiled. Any other thoughts on that new RTS from Frost Giant before we move on, gents? I'm going to take that silence as a continue on, Joey. Please work our way to Witchfire, the next game. Guys, this is a game I did not have on my radar. I had heard whispers of, its be of it being in the showcase. Absolutely no idea what it was about. Had a cool name. Didn't know anything about the developer. Uh, this was probably one of the games that stole my mind and heart here at the showcase today. It's kind of gunplay meets magic. There's a nice assortment of weapons available on top of those magic spells that you are casting. It looked like from your hand. On top of that, guys, this might have been one of the best graphical looking games at the showcase today as well. Drew, over to you. What are your thoughts on Witchfire? Uh, I will be buying this as soon as I can and probably spend a stupid amount of time in it. That combination of magic and gunplay, like the, the combos you're going to be able to do are going to be sick. You're going to get some sweet cinematics. That game capture is going to going to just be something you're going to want to show people like check out, you know, check out these awesome combos that I did. I've done zero research on this game, even after watching it and getting excited. I don't want anything to be ruined for me. I want to go into it 
barely understanding what's going to happen because it looks like the kind of world that I could get that that sense of awe and excitement of just diving in and figuring it out as I go. I mean, this game looks beautiful. Uh, it's an upcoming first-person shooter video game developed by Polish independent studio The Astronauts. It's made for Windows, or Microsoft Windows, rather, or PC in this case, at least for the early access period, which starts later this year. Uh, guys, for an indie studio, this is probably one of the best-looking games I've ever seen. Absolutely amazing AAA-level graphics. John, over to you on this one. What are your thoughts on Witchfire, and will you be diving in as well? Uh, so, yeah, when, when this was uh, shown on Summer Game Fest... Uh, I think this is I think this is the game that took everyone by storm or, or caught them off guard, uh, and rightfully so. Like, like you said, Joey, and I think you know Drew mentioned as well. Graphically, this game is absolutely insane. Uh, I believe the comment I made during the co stream was, "Oh well, I only have a 980, you know, RIP to my computer. I'm not going to be able to run this, but thank you know, good thing I have a Series X I can run it on." Because uh, this game looks amazing. Uh, the gameplay looks fantastic. That combination of magic and, and gunfire that we've touched on. Uh, already uh is it's awesome and just seeing this gameplay footage uh yeah i think i'm with drew i think i'm gonna be getting this uh asap as soon as they're able to to pre-order it uh probably getting it unless it shows up on game pass magically but other than that yeah i'm i'm pretty much there with drew getting it day one i mean it just looks so good like such a combination of different guns available from muskets to pistols to shotguns really cool looking enemies you have crossbows in there as well on the spell side there's some like electrifying shockingly amazing lightning spells you have fire setting people ablaze i mean there's just so much going on endless action it kind of has that doom action appeal with a little bit of a slower pace you have some nice speed up skills in there i'm curious to see what else comes and what kind of story is based here uh when Witchfire does eventually launch Next up on our list is going to be American Arcadia. Guys, if you've ever seen The Truman Show, for those who are a little bit older there in the audience tonight, as well as listening to the podcast later down the line, uh, this game to me is practically The Truman Show. It's made by the same dev and publishing team behind Indie Heartthrob Call of the Sea. I was a big fan of that game. I believe it launched in, it was December 2019 or 2020, if I remember correctly. I want to say 2020. Really cool. Uh, it's kind of Lovecraftian type of game there. This one looks like it has an intriguing story to it. Not too much given away yet, but you're definitely surveilled and it's definitely one to look out for. John, what are your thoughts on American Arcadia? So for those here on Twitch, this this uh, female avatar that we just saw is giving me mad Dolores Umbridge, vi uh, 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 Umbridge <laughs> vibes pardon me, uh, throughout this entire trailer. And I think that's the reason why like this, this trailer really triggered me uh, the entire time because nobody likes Dolores. It's simple as that. Uh, yeah, Truman Show, I think, is spot on. Uh, instead of uh, one person being the star of the show, it feels like it's this entire town. Uh, it, it's reality TV on crack, if you will, is essentially what I see the Truman Show and and this really kind of being, uh, which the scary thing is like this one day is actually a real possibility also uh, that people can be born into a TV show that we, that society watches for entertainment. It seems a little ridiculous, but when you take a look at the current state of reality TV, it doesn't seem that crazy to think about. Um, I might check it out. Uh, I think it's one of those cool, I don't know if I'm going to say it's a game that you want to casually play if you're looking for like an easy laid back game, because I have a feeling that this game would be anything but that. But, uh, but yeah, I, I'd be down to take a look at it. Drew, what are your thoughts on American Arcadia and being watched as you play the game in the game and outside? That's creepy. Um, yeah, right. I, re I really like the art style, though. I, I love. I would be willing to spend some time in this game just because of how how it looks. It's got a great cartoony feel, which I think is probably intentional to undercut that. Um, oh, what's the word I want to use? Not hostile, but like that that kind of ominous vibe of you are trapped in this world, and now that you know it, they're coming to get you. Like the the the, the very nice cartoony style is set to make you feel a little more at ease until they catch up to you um i i could see me playing through this one at least once i don't i'm guessing based on it what it is it's not going to be too long of a game uh at the very least i'll probably watch someone else play it and maybe just you know enjoy it through them that's almost like inception you're watching someone else play a game while they're being watched i mean there's a lot of watching going on there but definitely want to check out guys if you're interested american arcadia uh, by Out of the Blue and Raw Fury. Next up, guys, I was going to have you do your best zombie impressions, but they threw us for a loop. It wasn't Dead Island 2, but Goat Simulator 3. 
skipping Goat Simulator number two. It's not a thing. Uh, it took the internet by storm, trending all afternoon. People are trying to find where Goat Simulator 2 was. Well, guys, it's non-existent, but this one did make its way into the stream. A nice little ba here and a ba there. Drew, what are your thoughts on Goat Simulator 2? Will you be diving in with your goat friends into this one? I feel so vindicated that there's not a Goat Simulator 2. Like, I didn't play the first one. I watched videos of people playing the first one, and I thought it was hilarious. And I just assumed I missed the second one in there, even though I feel like that would have been news. Um... If it goes on Steam sale or something, I can see me picking this up and, and goofing around in it a little bit because it is just dumb fun that you can be extremely ridiculous in. You know, if I can get it for five or ten bucks, why not? I can spend some hours just goading around. Goading around. You love to see it. John, you're not escaping this one, though. I need to hear your best goat noise before you give us your thoughts. No. <laughs> There's my best goat noise. Um, You know... <laughs> This trailer might be one of my favorite trailers I've ever seen just of because of like how ridiculous this entire thing is. Uh, a guy starts out by sniffing his armpit before he goes on a run on a boardwalk, uh, which, number one, is cringy enough as it is. And then goats start attacking, uh, whether they're uh, headbutting you off of the boardwalk into the river, whether they have lasers strapped to their freaking heads. Uh, or whether you know they're shooting rockets as you are par parasailing through the skies, uh, it, it's ridiculous. I I've seen people play it also, uh, OG Goat Sim, if you will. Um, but I I don't think I'd ever actually want to spend real money on this game <laughs> to even try it out. I, if someone wants to uh, gift me a copy of the game, maybe. If someone wants to give me a gift card for Steam, maybe. Um, but I will not actually spend money on this game. Do you think that this is going to let you uh, play with a bunch of people at the same time? The way it here at the end, all four goats are staring at the guy. Do you think it's going to be multiplayer where you can all be in there doing your thing as goats? Probably. I'm pretty sure this is four player co-op. And I'll be honest. Co-op no. no seems like a strong word. <laughs> <laughs> right? Four player chaos. Um, I just looked up goat noises too, boys. That's a rabbit hole. I never want to go down again. Uh, not going to try to replicate that Yikes. here, but it is definitely an Yikes. interesting one. Uh, goat Simulator 2, in case you missed it. Again, it wasn't a thing, but Goat Simulator 3 is coming, and it's coming this fall, gents. Get your whinnies and your nays and your bas and whatever you want to make goat noises with, uh, as well as your rockets and electrifyingly awesome guns and all different things these goats will be carrying along with them as they go after Stinky Armpit Boy on the boardwalk this fall. Stinky Armpit Boy, is that the official name? That's what we're calling him. I, I think like he it. just dubbed it from... I mean, who sniffs their armpit before they go on the run, too? Like, what is who going on Who sniffs their armpit after the run, Joey? I mean, some people probably should, if we're being honest. <laughs> but, hey, uh, next up, Marvel Midnight Suns, guys. Marvel games always in the news. Uh, this one in particular, we got another really cool CGI trailer but still no signs of gameplay, and it releases just a little bit later this year in early October. Uh, for those who don't know much about this game, it's made by a bunch of developers who are behind the team at XCOM, uh, the Alien Tactics franchise. It plays similar to Gears Tactics for those who dove into that, maybe on Game Pass. Uh, overall, I think the game's going to be cool, but a lot of people really have no idea what's coming. They think it's going to be this action-adventure-style game, and it isn't. It looks really cool in CGI, but the gameplay is definitely going to be different. John, over to you for your thoughts. You're a big Marvel fan. Or are you a big tactics fan as well? Oh, we'll find out. <laughs> we, we will find out. I, I play a little TFT every now and then for League of Legends. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said on the co-stream, I will definitely give the game a shot. Uh, the fact that we still don't know what the game is actually going to look like or how it's going to play. I think is is kind of a I'm not going to call it a red flag. I'm going to give it a yellow flag. I'm going to give it a caution uh, just because it just adds a lot of question marks to, to like, what are we actually going to see? How's this game actually going to play? Yes. OK, great. We're seeing everyone's favorite characters in here. Uh, I'm a big Spider-Man fan. So you obviously have my attention. Anytime Spider-Man shows up on screen, I'm paying attention. I will give the game a download. But will the game be good enough for me to keep? It's a great question. We'll have to find out. And um, I could probably give you an answer if you gave me a little uh, in-game gameplay there, Marvel. I'd appreciate that. Drew, over to you. I know you're a big superhero fan as well. What are your thoughts on tactic games? Did you ever get a chance to play something like an XCOM or Gears Tactics? 
I did Gears Tactics, um, and I, I really enjoyed it, too. It's one I need to go back and finish. Um, and then slightly different versions of Tactics games, but I was also a big fan of some of those top-down Tactics games like Advanced Wars or Fire Emblem. So it's, you know, it's a little different, but the same idea of got to strategically move your folks and being outnumbered and endlessly restarting because a character that you really like died for the fifth time because you stopped paying attention. Um I, I, I'm with John, though. I want them to show me the gameplay. Like, I'm really excited that they keep revealing new characters, like seeing Evil Venom and Spider-Man here. That was awesome. And that gets me really p- pumped that they're going to be in the game. I'm already picturing Spider-Man having an ability to pull an enemy closer to him or for him to pull himself away from an enemy. Who knows which one it'll be or both. But I, I need to see what it's actually going to look like because... As much as I love superheroes and as much as I enjoy these these type of tactics games, if it goes from looking like that in the trailers or cutscenes to looking like Fire Emblem, for an example, I'm out. I'm I, I can't. I need it to at least be similar enough. Gears did a great job of that with tactics of going from the gears that we know in the cutscenes to still very much gears in miniature form for the the actual gameplay. And if they can do that, great, but I need to see it. And that's the key to me. Like, I mean, we're what, four or five months out? I'm not going to do the math there. But in October, early October is when this thing is supposed to launch. Or I believe it's like fall, maybe even September. Uh, with that being said, the fact they're not showing gameplay makes me nervous. Uh, it makes me nervous that maybe the game isn't polished. Maybe it looks completely different and they don't think it's going to sell well enough based on the gameplay itself. So I'm anxious. The Marvel name in and of itself will definitely carry it one direction, and that's going to be a positive direction. But will it last? Will it stand around? Uh, We've seen some Marvel games not quite do very well. I mean, just recently, Marvel Avengers, that game had a lot of hype initially and has kind of fallen flat after launch. I'm curious to see if this is another one here over from 2K. Next up is Cuphead, the delicious last course DLC, the final DLC for Cuphead, uh, a game that really took the world as one of the top indie games in its launch year. Really cool graphics, very old Disney Mickey Mouse style graphics, uh, really cool 2D platformer. Uh, difficult to play, though, for those who don't know. This is a game that frustrates me quite a bit. Absolutely love it, but it is one of the most challenging games I have played. Drew, over to you. Have you ever had a chance to play the original Cuphead? And what are your thoughts on this new icy level expansion? So I haven't actually played it. This is one of those games that uh, came out while I was still working at GameStop when I first moved. Mm. And it was on sale, and so I had a chance to buy it. And I was like, oh, I'm going to love this game, and I bought it. And I went home and I downloaded it. Never launched it. Um, So I need to go back and play it. I've watched several people do playthroughs of it, and it looks incredibly frustrating. And that's probably part of why I've avoided it, is I know how frustrating it is. But... Gosh, the art style is just incredible. The 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 nostalgic that they captured, like they did it perfectly. So I'm glad I gave them my money to support it because I think it's awesome. I should just really actually go play it now. Um, I didn't realize there was still a DLC to come out. So when when you all were talking about it being revealed, I was a little surprised. But definitely good value for the money there with this game. You can get hours of torment and sadness out of it. Well, guys, we definitely enjoy games over on the podcast, but every once in a while, we have to give some homework. So, Drew, before you're on the next Level Up podcast, I need you to at least take down one boss and Cuphead to give us your thoughts. Roger that. There we go. John, over to you. I don't think you've jumped into Cuphead. I really want to entice you to do some couch co-op with me around here, um, but I'm also slightly afraid that you might break some of my controllers with how aggravating this game can get. Yeah. Um, Joey, my question to you is, why would you ever recommend a game (laughs) <laughs> to a friend that brings you pain and suffering. I, I just don't understand. Uh, yes, the game graphically looks absolutely fantastic. The the art style is amazing. But when you have one of your friends tell you day in and day out how frustrating this game is, and look, th- this cute little sweet guy over here known as Joey that you see on your Twitch stream right now uh, seems very bubbly and happy. When he gets upset, That is a big red flag. In fact, you might call it five red flags. Uh, So if Cuphead is making Joey get all hot and steamy in the angry way, uh, why am I going to play that? Everyone already knows I'm a hothead to begin with. Why am I going to do that? My fuse is a lot shorter than Joey's. Yeah, I I don't think it's a good idea for me to actually play. But, Joey, there is one thing. There there is one (laughs) thing I do enjoy, though. 
And that's watching other people get frustrated playing a game. Hey. So I'll be more than happy to come over and watch you play and get frustrated. Uh, but yes, that that's about it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely an interesting one. Drew teasing a potential stream of some Cuphead here in the future. Um, but yeah, overall, I really do enjoy it. It is frustrating because you try levels over and over. Um, but for those who played maybe like Dark Souls or Elden Ring, it's one of those games where there are patterns and they're going to vary here and there. There is some RNG involved. But overall, you can learn the different styles of patterns. And then when they eventually come up, you kind of know how to react to them. It's frustrating because you die a ton of times trying to learn the patterns. Um, but overall, it is beatable. And it's one of those games all about like conquering uh, struggles and overcoming obstacles and different things like that. So it's cool in that aspect. Uh, it's definitely uh, even on the normal mode, it is very difficult to beat. I personally can't even imagine the hard mode, even on the early bosses. So we're just going to stick it to normal for now. And I'm still working my way through, I think, Island 2 or 3. So I have a ways to go before I can even touch the DLC. Next up is the Midnight Fight Express. Just a quick one to mention here. Another indie game. This one coming day one to Game Pass when it launches on August 23rd. It is made by a single developer, guys. Really cool art style here. Uh, overall, you're fighting your way through... I believe it initially starts out as a train and then you go through some other buildings and such as you go on. Um, but it's a really cool, simple game. I believe it falls into the roguelike genre. So there is some RNG based elements. I think there's some kind of power ups that come involved as well, whether it be from guns or different physical attacks and abilities. Um, but this is one to look out for and one of my top 2022 indie games list. Drew, over to you. Any quick thoughts here on Midnight Fight Express? Is this one you're looking forward to or just what do you want to kind of watch from a distance? I think it's one I'll play. I do remember it being on that list that you published earlier in the year. Um, it sounded cool then, but seeing it now, it definitely looks like a fun time waster um, and a good time. So I'll check it out. Cool. Especially John, any Pass. thoughts on Midnight Fight Express? As Drew said, it is coming to Game Pass. It launches in August. Are you going to be picking this one up and throwing some fists? I mean, I just want to know how we watched an entire trailer that has a lot of NPCs in it. Uh, that looks fun and exciting, but none of them were zombies. I think it's I, how in the world do we get a game without zombies? It's it's strange. Um, yeah, you know, I, I I probably won't get it at release. I'll probably watch gameplay, watch other people play it a little bit. Uh, definitely not my cup of tea when it comes to games, but I would give it a shot based upon seeing a little bit more from the game. So we'll keep an eye out for that one. The next one, guys, play your Uwu Senpai cards because we do have some nice anime-style games up next. Honkai Star Rail, the new mobile game from Verse. I believe this one may hit PC as well. For those who don't know who Verse is, they are the dev behind hits Genshin Impact and Honkai Impact 3, uh, or third, rather. This is going to be another game in that similar genre and similar to the same world as Honkai Impact 3rd. But on top of that, it will be a turn-based combat. And then following that, we also got a look at Zenless Zone Zero, also from Hoyoverse. This one, a little bit more Genshin Impact, kind of meets a Nier Automata-style blade fighting. Overall, both games look intriguing to me. Not typically the genre I dive right into. At the same point, they're both somewhat intriguing, even though there are some gotcha mechanics involved. Drew, over to you first. What are your thoughts on these two, and will you be considering these two as well? Uh, probably. Uh, those probably be, again, ones that I'll consider and then never actually play. Um <laughs> I know me, but I, I love I'm a sucker for the way anime games look. I always think they'll be a ton of fun. I end up starting them and then not finishing them. Uh, Tales of Arise is still sitting there waiting for me to come back to it. But it looks great. I, I, I love the art style. I know there are uh, tons of people who love these games exactly. Um, so I'm glad that they're going to exist. And, you know, I could end up accidentally stumbling into it. But I don't know. We'll see accidentally stumbling into it with your blades a swinging john zenless zone zero honkai star rail i know you're a huge mobile game fan and a really big fan of gotchas uh so we'll, we know you're going to download honkai star rail what are your thoughts on zenless zone zero in this fluid sword like combat no um <laughs> that, that's my <laughs> thought first off drew how do you accidentally stumble into purchasing a game i, I, I just want to ask that real quick uh but <laughs> the same way you stumble into buying lux skins on league of legends john first off That's not fair. Uh, that's 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 not fair. That's not fair. Uh, anywho, uh, no, uh, I will not be getting either one of these games. Yes, I like the art style. Yes, all three of us are big anime fans. Uh, but that alone won't be enough for me to get these games. I think they look great. I would rather sit down and watch an anime. I'd rather sit down and read a manga. I'd rather do all of that or watch somebody else play this game. 
Um, I am, I don't know, for whatever reason, I could never really get into uh, these style games. Uh, usually graphics will be enough to, to let me get them a try. Uh, but I don't know. I've, I've really struggled with these kinds of games, and I, I really can't give you a reason why. Well, John, maybe you'll come out of your shell for this next one. Teenage Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge. Uh, this is a simple arcade-style game coming to the new day and age consoles. We have Casey, join, Casey Jones joining the roster uh, in a new six-player game mode. So this is a new feature coming out. We originally thought it was only four turtles that were playable. Now you have Casey Jones also joining alongside some other characters. This is going to be available for both online and local play, launching a little bit later this month, next week on June 16th, and it will also be available day one in Game Pass. John, were you a big Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fans, and will you be jumping into this arcade like combat? Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was amazing. I think like the last three generations grew up with different versions of, of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I think that's absolutely fantastic. I love the style of this game. has that old-school arcade feel to it. has that... Uh, old school Sega Genesis feel to it. Uh, absolutely. Going to be playing this day one. It looks great. I miss these kinds of games. Uh, so, yeah, I'm definitely going to play it. Uh, but, Joey, before we go on, I feel like we should all state our favorite Ninja Turtle while we're at it. Oh. Um, I don't remember which color is which. I want to say Donatello or Michelangelo. So Donatello is purple. Okay. Michelangelo is orange. Leonardo's blue and Raphael's red. Donatello would be the one I think I would lean toward. Drew? Oh, I'm a, I'm a Leonardo guy. Give me the swords. Uh, Michelangelo. Gotta Beautiful. Say it. Dude's, and dude, Viking, and Viking Bear is Donatello. We're, we're set. There we go. Yeah, we got turtles all across the board. <laughs> Shell shocking our audience and continuing to move down the line. This one does look cool. I love these throwback games. There were a couple in the show earlier that did not resonate as well with me, but this one seems to have hit all of us pretty square on. Excited to dive into this new mode when it launches later this month. And Pot of Luck's over here saying, of course, John's a Michelangelo guy. What's that supposed to mean, Pot of Luck? You, you, you want to go? <laughs> Come on, bring it. Let's go. <laughs> I'll bring my numchucks out. Set them down the sewer great <laughs> pot of luck. Uh, Metal Hellsinger, Drew, this is one that caught your eye. Very Doom-like, a rhythmic shooter as well. Uh, kind of taking that Beat Saber mechanics and adding it to a Doom-style gameplay. Very unique, very metal, and a lot of big, well-known artists involved in this one. What are your thoughts on Metal Hellsinger? I, I remember seeing some stuff about this one before and being pretty excited about it. So getting to actually see some of the gameplay and listen to the soundtrack and watch the combat sync up with the beat. Oh my gosh, this is going to be an awesomely fun, frustrating game uh, because I can only imagine if you're not on beat, it's going to get really hard. And when combat gets frantic, you're going to get off beat. So having to stay disciplined and stay tight while rocking out to this cast is going to be insanely awesome i'm going to have to wear my headset when i play this game because i'm going to want that music as loud as possible in my ear holes i mean <laughs> you've got folks from trivium system of a down lamb of god like it's ah it's gonna be awesome serge tankian is is in it like i i'm in i'm i'm sold give it to me now now, this is one of the ones I'm wondering, is it controlling where you're looking at the same time? Is the beat pretty much like the track, rather, what you're looking at, and then you have the bars coming in from the side? Or are you controlling your aim and paying attention to the bars for when you're able to hit shots? Like, they didn't really answer that to me, but it becomes hella complicated if it's part two. I know there's games like that already. Um, the Crypt of the Necro Dancer is one that's is rhythm based, and you have to. Hmm. It's a, you know it's a very different style of game, but you could definitely do it where you're doing the movement, and you've just got to make sure that you're paying attention to the beat. But if it's on rails, that would definitely make it a little easier, and I'm okay with either one. I'm very curious to see how this one does, John. I know you like some screamo and some metal and all different genres of music yourself. What are your thoughts on this one and jumping into a new beat style cyber style of game here with Metal Hellslinger? You want to know the number one thing that made me believe this game is going to be highly successful uh, in this play style? Mm. If you take a look at this amazing person we have here on screen right now, that is a metalhead. That is a metalhead who is developing a video game who understands what music can do and what music can power people through. What uh, the people want. Exactly. So I'm seeing 
the people developing this game, I'm seeing the gameplay, I'm seeing songs, I'm seeing artists that I have grown up with that I know, and the only thing I can think of is this game looks great. I want to play this game. I want to play it now. Drew, I agree. Headphones, probably. I'm going to do you one better. This makes me want to go out and buy a full room uh, surround sound system and just absolutely shake and destroy the entire house while I do this. Um, I don't want it just to be uh, located in my ear holes. I want the entire neighborhood melting to the ground while I am playing this game uh, from the the sound waves just absolutely rocking everyone. Uh, that's what I want. And and I feel like this game is going to deliver on it. I'm, I'm right there with you. Like normally this game probably wouldn't be for me. But the fact that, the, that there's that musical element to it, that is right up my alley. I want to give it a shot. And in all honesty, I want to see a VR version of this using Beat Saber mechanics because I have a feeling like one, it'll cause extreme damage to your house after jumping around and swinging your arms around like crazy. Uh, but I just feel like that would be like the next best evolution of this game. Definitely just, one to watch out for. Really cool stuff. Drew, what are your final thoughts here on Metal Hellsinger? I need it in VR. I will buy a yes. VR headset for that. I am I'm ready for this game. I think there's a demo out now, and I'm going to go find it. You love to see it. You love to hear it. And you love to keep an eye on this one when it does eventually launch. Next up, this is another indie game that sold my heart right alongside Witchfire. Another one I was expecting in this particular case, but not to expect looking this amazing. Uh, super intriguing. A wide array of zones and biomes kind of shown throughout the trailer. We have different weapons, different equipment, tons of different enemies to boot. And there's a cool little rolling mechanic where you can kind of change your biome and zone based on cards that get drawn. Nightingale is definitely one to look out for in my book. Uh, Drew and John, I believe this one caught both of your attention as well. Drew, we'll start with you. There's some gathering and survival mechanics in here and definitely a really cool wealth of experiences to explore. Yeah, I'm the this whole the whole survival type game has been around for a while. There's been a whole lot of big hits. Valheim was the closest one to getting me really to dive in and try one of them out. Uh, but even that only got me for a couple hours. There's something about the aesthetic of this one that that touches the things in me that I love the the whole fantasy setting and this idea of future or like magic tech kind of stuff happening here. I don't know. It it really grabs me and it feels like it might be what finally gets me to to spend way too much time in a a crafting survival game a la Seven Days to Die in Valheim. John, over to you. I know you're a fan of some survival games. We've played our fair share of Ark and Atlas and different games like that together here and there. What are your thoughts on this new one here in Nightingale? Yeah, I, I think it looks great. Uh, one of the things I really enjoy with any kind of survival game or any kind of uh, world exploring game is that aspect of exploring the world, getting to know the land that you're playing in. Uh, that's one of the things I absolutely love about World of Warcraft, uh, which some people hate, which blows my mind, is I just love how large and diverse and different all the zones of the world are in World of Warcraft on Azeroth, whether or, or it's in Shadowlands or Draenor, wherever it is. Uh, the fact that every zone is different, has a different story, has a different environment, has a different feel. Uh, you constantly have to change and adapt. And the same thing in survival games. You have different biomes, whether you're in the desert biome or the mountainous biome. You have to change and adapt. And this is just uh, giving me those vibes also. Then you throw into account you have these quasi-tarot cards that are being brought into this game also that kind of change on, on, on uh, what seems to unlock different areas and uh, biomes of the game as well. Uh, just adds to the explorability of this game. That's what caught my eye with this, and I think the graphics look great also. Uh, it's definitely a game I'd be open to checking out. Absolutely. I'm super excited for this one again. Indie games always have my heartstrings, and this one in particular looks phenomenal, both graphically as well as just the variation. I think I love exploring different zones when it comes to games, and this really hits a lot of those strings as well. Next up, in just a couple games left, guys, before we head over to predictions and then eventually wrap up tonight's show, Layers of Fear from Bloober Team. Drew, this is one that caught your eye. You mentioned playing the medium earlier on. I believe it launched, if I remember correctly, like January 2021, a game that caught a lot of different eyes and a very cool game because it ran two different environments at once uh, without giving too much away. That was a really cool game, and so was the Blair Witch from Bloober. What are your thoughts on Layers of Fear and making its way back into the swing? 
layers of fears. Um, oh, fears. Yeah. Yeah, Layers of Fear. I actually played some of Layers of Fear. It was one that I actually watched someone else do a whole playthrough of, but I played Ooh. it some myself first. Um, and then I really dove into the medium because there was something about that that spoke to me. I think you were right. It was the the two worlds, and then also I had just gotten the Series X not long before it, and it was one of those that was only for the Series X, so I was really excited to test out that dual environment thing and, and play something that was a part of launch or launch-ish. Uh, it was a ton of fun. Blooper does great storytelling. Um, they let your imagination do a whole lot of work while having these incredibly immersive environments. Um, don't play this. If you're easily scared, don't play this one. Um, even if you're not easily scared, probably play it during the daytime, <laughs> before you, not right before you go to bed in the dark alone. Uh, it they they do a good job of putting you in that world and it will freak you out, but it's worth it for the the intense story they'll tell. John, I know you didn't have a chance to play the medium yourself, but we did watch Panicking Pat play quite a bit on stream. What are your thoughts on this next one, Layers of Fears? Yeah, um, I'm not gonna be playing it, <laughs> uh, even if it is during the day, uh, mainly because horror games just really aren't my thing. Um, and in fact. Here's your level up challenge. If you do play this game, play it in the dark. Play with the lights off. Ooh. Play it alone, uh, and report back after you have your night full of nightmares, uh, and then we'll 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 go from there. But no, um, uh, this is probably a game I'd probably enjoy watching more than actually playing, so I can actually pay attention a little bit more to the story, uh, and and to go along with all that stuff. I mean, I enjoyed watching, like you said, Panic and Pat play the medium. Uh, I, I found the dynamic of those two worlds very interesting in the story that they were telling and being able to affect both realities at the same time. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, the horror part of it was, yeah, it was okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, these style of games, I, I, personally for me, like I, I get why people like them, but for me, I would get more enjoyment watching someone else play it and seeing somebody else get scared uh, versus me playing it and getting scared. Absolutely. There's two different horror. Well, three, really. One that likes to play it themselves. Another one that likes to watch from a distance and challenge others, even though he says he won't play it during the light. Uh, and then there's a third that just try to avoid it completely. I tend to lean with you, John. I, I'm in that same category, even though I just messed with you for saying it. Um, but in the end, it is definitely an intriguing one. We'll probably have to sit back and watch Drew play this one. Layers of Fears launches early 2023. We, uh, we have a new Patreon goal that's been um, launched Ooh. in the chat, and that is getting Fiasco to do a uh, horror weekly stream on the OTN account. So oh, one hundred, right. go go subscribe to the Patreon now. We haven't decided what that threshold is yet, but it's probably going to be impossible. One hundred dollars a month, and you have to sub for at least two months. That's very reasonable. Go. Let me go look at my budget. Because yeah, because I. <laughs> I do not like horror games. I have no problem admitting that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see if we can jump scare you later on as the show goes on. Next up, guys, just a quick look here at some Nightwing gameplay from Gotham Knights. Uh, they're kind of drip feeding content on this one. They gave a little story up front. They teased the Court of Owls. From there, we've seen the playable characters in game, a number of Robin editions in there in particular. Uh, John, I know a voice actor sticks out to you in this one, and I'm a big Nightwing fan myself. The gameplay looks cleaner in this from the last time we saw it, and the release is still set for October 2022. John, over to you. What are your thoughts on the new look Nightwing? I, I love everything about this game so far. Uh, the fact that it's going to be a Batman game that literally fe features three different iterations of Robin Two that have obviously moved on. You have Nightwing that's moved on. Uh, the current Robin that you'll play in this game is Tim Drake, uh, which is personally my favorite Robin of, of all the different iterations of Robin. Uh, sorry, it's not Damien Drew. I'm sorry. It, it, it kind of does have that Damien-esque feel to it, though. Uh, so I, I will say, you know, maybe they they had that little bit of an edgier crossover like Damien has. Uh, I see that. But uh, but yeah, I'm excited for this. I mean, sidekicks, especially in the DC universe, don't get a lot of love unless they go like break away from Batman and do their own thing. Then they might get a little mini series and an appearance here and there. Uh, but I love the fact that this game is going to feature three different Robins, a current Robin and Tim Drake, and then the other two being iterations of uh, Robin uh, from previous uh, Batman eras. Uh, I think it's great. Um, I'm excited for it. I'm definitely going to be getting it. I think the play style looks fantastic, and I'm I'm really excited for it. 
Drew, I know you're a fan of an actor in here as well, and John started to allude to it. What are your thoughts on that actor as well as the gameplay look here at Nightwing? Uh, remind me who Nightwing's actor is. John? Oh, our actor stand has stepped uh, out, what, it looks what, like. What happened? What, what, what are we doing? <laughs> who is Nightwing in this game? Who's voicing him? Oh, I don't even know. Who is voicing him? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Well, John. <laughs> this is the content that you come here. Wait, folks. Hold up, hold up. We're hold doing up. it live. As John looks that one up, Drew, what are your thoughts on the gameplay of Nightwing? Uh, actorless uh, involved here, but at least the gameplay, we did see quite a bit of Nightwing. What are your thoughts on the fluidity of that combat? Uh, it looks incredible. I mean, they've always done good with um, with with the combat in these Batman games. That's been their big selling point. I mean, obviously, it's Batman, so at some point you have that going for it, but. People wouldn't have kept playing after the first one if the combat sucked. Um, so it they've done a good job of adapting it, it looks like, to each of these characters just a little bit. So each one feels different enough. But um, yeah, it, it looks great. Honestly, though, I'm more intrigued story-wise for this game. The story of these Batman games have all been pretty great. And the idea of Batman being dead um, that I still don't believe, and I'm going to bet money that that's the twist at some point. But... I'm more excited story-wise. The gameplay will be more than enough fun to keep me in it, but the story is what's going to drive me to play it to the end. Okay, Joe, I have to ask. So the the voice actor for Nightwing is Christopher Sean. Why am I supposed to know that? Well, you were talking about all the voice actors involved here, so I thought you were just the expert on the topic, sir. Wait, what? I, I'm so confused now. When was I talking about the voice actors? Wait, maybe I'm confused. Weren't you talking about voice actors for the Robins? No, I was talking about their actual names. Oh, <laughs> that's, what I was talking, that's why I was calling them Tim and 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 Damien because that was their that actual. That explains <laughs> the disconnect. I was so confused. I'm like, I'm like, I was like, wow. I'm if like, he's an expert, we might as well just have him go through the whole list. No, like, like Nightwing is Dick Grayson. Uh, that's I that's see, his I DC see, Universe non superhero name. Uh, but yeah, I was like, I'm like, I don't understand. Like, what? Where are you going? <laughs> So, now it all comes full circle, just like the swinging combat that we saw with Nightwing in that gameplay trailer. Any other thoughts here on Gotham Knights, Drew? I'm similar to you. I really want to see more about this story, and I'm also going to place that bet on Batman not quite being dead. Uh, I do think he eventually makes a return, but the Court of Owls as a villain, I think, is going to be a very, very fun one to watch play out. Absolutely. I'm stoked. John, next up is the T. Lou voice actor question. Uh, we're going to dive into the voice actors for The Last of Us and see how many of them you know. Um, but first, let's talk about The Last of Us Part 2. It sold over 10 million copies. Neil Druckmann took the stage here with Jeff Keighley, told us that phenomenal number, so big shout-out to Naughty Dog on that one. On top of that, we got a number of other announcements here, many of which were known but just not publicly known officially as of yet. Uh, Factions 2 is now officially announced as a standalone multiplayer game. Guys, this was supposed to be the multiplayer with The Last of Us 2. Uh, it was originally supposed to release in June 2020, and here we are uh, in June 2022, and it's not come out because it's become a full-fledged multiplayer game by and of itself as a single game. Uh, it's From what I've heard, it's supposed to play something like Escape from Tarkov, or Tarkov without driving too much into it. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out, but it's still not ready. So more than two years in development, I think it's about four years at this point. It should be a big, fully-fledged game. It's going to come with its own story, as well as its own cast of characters, slightly different from what you guys got in The Last of Us, now with it becoming a standalone. And on top of that, we did get our first look at a piece of concept art as well. Drew, I know The Last of Us was a big game for you, and you really enjoyed that series. What are your thoughts of it having a standalone multiplayer here in Factions 2? I'm just very curious to see what that game is going to be. I don't... I don't know. It's I know what Escape from Tarkov is, but I just I can't wrap my head around The Last of Us as a property being a multiplayer game like that. Um, and it might just be a branding issue. Like maybe if I wasn't thinking of it as The Last of Us and just as a, you know, post-apocalyptic survival game, maybe that makes it a little easier to imagine. But I, I just don't want them to pull the brand down by making it a completely different game that isn't what they were doing so well with this, with the titles originally, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think that's a fair argument. I mean, Naughty Dog and really Sony in general has been known for those single player stories, action adventure games uh, built around these rich story elements. 
And taking that with a multiplayer spin is something new, not only to Naughty Dog, but to Sony as well. I think they'll do a good job with it. Again, like you're saying, it's not the first thing I associate Tilu with. When I think The Last of Us, I think this deep, rich story, I think these amazing characters. And it sounds like some of that will be present here in some way or another in the multiplayer aspect. But on top of that, I didn't think the gameplay as far as the guns were that anything stellar. I thought they were good. I didn't think they were amazingly stellar. I was there more for the story. So that is something I'm curious to see. Again, it's been years in development, so I'm sure they've worked through that. John, what are your thoughts here on Factions 2? I just want to know what your guys' reaction is going to be when they drop the Battle Royale version of The Last of Us. I mean, uh, <laughs> Escape from Tarkov kind of is similar. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. The name I, is perfect. You are The Last of Us. You win. You hey. Go. Yeah, I mean, so <laughs> I don't know. I, I I think I'm I'm think I'm there with you guys. Uh, you know, th this is a, a a game title that is known for its single player story. It's known for its gameplay. It, it doesn't really scream multiplayer game to me. Um, but I feel like as gamers, we have to give them a benefit of the doubt with just how impactful this game was on the gaming industry and gamers uh, in, in general. So I feel like they get the benefit of the doubt until it's proven to be a bad game. Uh, again, like for me, it's one of those games where I'll probably wait to see what other people uh, think of when they play it. I'm not going to go out and drop 50, 60, 70 bucks on a game that I'm kind of like eh, on. So, uh, you know, I'll watch it, but uh, we'll, we'll see how it pans out. But, but I, I am a little hesitant with the idea of a multiplayer version of The Last of Us. Um but at the same time, I, I feel like it has a possibility to work. And this is one I think will be a live service game, if I had to guess. So I think it'll be free to play, releasing on PlayStation and PC. But again, just a guess there and not 100% sure. We'll have to keep an eye out. On top of that, we got a couple more updates to wrap up Jeff Keighley's show. The Last of Us on HBO. We knew the film was being done. We knew there was a series in the making, but now it is wrapping up filming soon. We got a few looks at some new photos there. Uh, we have Pedro Pascal from The Mandalorian coming in with his helmet off in this one, uh, as well as some other great casting throughout. I'm excited for this series, Drew. I know you are as well. What are your initial thoughts here on The Last of Us for HBO? I mean, just the the little screenshot they showed us looked great. Um, I think the casting is is phenomenal. Pedro Pascal has been great as Din Djarin. Um, the way he can convey emotion even with his helmet on, which is the common comparison to the Halo TV show. Um the acting he does is incredible. So I think he'll be a great Joel and Bella Ramsey is a phenomenal actress. Um, I'm stoked that she is playing Ellie. I think she's going to be awesome. Um, she stole the show in game of Thrones and she was even in this goofy show that we watched on Netflix um, where she plays a witch and is really funny. Um, but she actually left that because she got so big, they couldn't afford her anymore, but she's, she's phenomenal. So the kid can carry a show. So between the two of them, I, I think there's too much talent for this show to fail. Even if the story is just okay, they are going to make the script so much better than it is. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, and that's one thing people are nervous about, and it's always something that comes up, and John and I bring it up every time there's an adaptation, is the games were so good, and it's something that people remember fondly. And now you're coming and you're making, uh, in this case, supposedly some significant changes to the way the story plays out. And I'm curious to see how that does land with TLU fans. John, what are your thoughts on the HBO show? Uh, so P Pedro's amazing. He is a fantastic actor. Uh, I, I echo everything Drew said uh, with uh, his uh, uh, portrayal of the Mandalorian in the Disney Plus series. I think he's going to be great. I think it's going to be fantastic. I'll take a look at it. I, I'm, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be good. And the last announcement, unfortunately, this one did leak before the show. It's the Last of Us remake, uh, the second version of a remake. We got a trailer as well as some screenshot comparisons. Guys, the screenshot comparisons, it looks fantastic versus the last remake edition. Uh, it looks really cool. This, again, as a game, I believe, John, it was you that said it. It pretty much changed the industry, and it continues to as it releases once again. I think I made the comparison on the co-stream as well. Uh, this is kind of PlayStation Skyrim. It's a game that they can continue to release over and over, whether it be upping the graphics, whether it be throwing a director's cut tag on there. They can make this as many times as they want, and it will continue to sell like hotcakes. And we'll see it once again when it releases later this fall, September 2nd, on PC and PlayStation. The PC release may be slightly delayed. I've heard mixed things on that. We'll keep an eye out there. John, over to you first. I know you originally played The Last of Us and now having a chance at a remake. We don't have to spend too much time on this one, but will you be diving back into the world of The Last of Us once again? Uh, I think there's a possibility. Um, I'll be honest. I, I purchased the uh, 
Life is Strange uh, Platinum version or whatever it was to get the uh, remastered versions of Life is Strange uh, and Life is Strange 2 and Life is Strange Before the Storm and all that fun stuff. Um, and that is an example of remasters gone wrong because the gameplay was uh, really messed up. Uh, poor Drew uh, was playing through um, Life is Strange and on the fifth and final chapter of the game, it crashed on him and didn't save multiple times. I felt his frustration because knowing how that game ends, it's absolutely heart-wrenching, and to have to relive those moments over and over and over and over in a Groundhog Day sequence is terrible. Um, it's almost like you're in a time loop. Exactly. <laughs> Spoiler. Uh, from, uh, yes, uh, Drew, 100% Bay over Bay, absolutely. Uh, so yes, uh, I may dive back into it. it. It may not be something I dive into immediately, but there's a good chance I dive back into it. Drew, final thoughts on The Last of Us and the way this show was wrapped up. It was a good property to end on. It was very mellow is a good word for it. Like sometimes you get an ending of a show and it ends up being a letdown. It, it's not that it's it's too low key. It's just that it's not as good as you were expecting. This was a nice, here's something everyone's excited about. Here's some more information. And let's just get you excited for, for something to come in the future. Like it was... It was a nice way to level us out at the end, feeling good and excited without pumping the adrenaline up too high or or I don't know. It was it was a very nice way to just walk out of the presentation. OK, I'm going to level us out here on level up. Uh, I hated the ending. I thought it was terrible. And I don't think it's credit to Jeff and I don't think it's a credit to Naughty Dog either in that sense. I think there's two factors. One, The Last of Us remake did leak way beforehand. And then today, earlier in the day, the actual full trailer leaked as well. So I think that kind of takes some wind out of the sails. A lot of people in chat, both on YouTube and Twitch, were super disappointed by the ending. It was kind of a long interview as well. Now, again, I think Neil Druckmann is one of the craziest people in the industry overall. He has phenomenal influence. Again, award-winning games throughout with The Last of Us 1, The Last of Us Part 2, a uh, number of other influenced games that he's been a part of that have had huge impacts on the industry. And I think The Last of Us and the remake in and of itself is phenomenal. How many games do we see remade that have screenshots that look so different in a remake that looks so incredibly much better than the original remake itself? So I think that stuff is really cool overall. I just think, again, between the leaking and between Elden Ring being the comparison from last year, a lot of people are seeing this one falling far short because there wasn't that one more thing. It ended on this longer interview, and then it ended with a game that was pretty much leaked six months ago and then leaked again with the exact trailer the same day. So I, I don't want to blame Jeff or Neil for this because I definitely don't think it's their fault. With that being said, I think the leaks kind of took some wind out of the sails to this ending. I can see that. Um, it, it definitely didn't have that same strong ending like we're used to uh, for any of Jeff Keighley's shows. Uh, definitely missing that kind of one more thing hype train, especially with all the news of all the big names that are currently out in California right now uh, in the video game world. Obviously, there's a ton of other showcases coming up this weekend as well. Um, but yeah, um, it, it was definitely a letdown because it didn't have that high energy and the leaks definitely didn't help that at all. Um, I think overall, uh, you know, I said on the co-stream as well, Jeff Keighley kind of went out there on a uh, PR press tour saying, hey, guys, you know, kind of like cool off your expectations a little bit. Like you have to remember we're coming out of a, a two year lockdown. A lot of studios are, are still trying to put together these games. Uh, there's going to be some great stuff in there, but it's not going to be like the 2019 show or the 2018 show or anything like that. It's it's going to be uh, a little bit cooler when it comes to to the hot takes and, and the hot releases. Uh, so, so that is, I guess, something there. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, I think it's okay to feel disappointed with how the show ended. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think overall it was maybe like a solid 7 out of 10, 7.5 out of 10. I agree with what Panic and Pat rated the show there. Uh, there were definitely moments that it was very slow. Uh, and I think that is just a issue currently when it comes to video game showcases that whoever actually puts it together is kind of missing where the energy spikes and drops. And it just stays too low for too long. Yeah, and long interviews can definitely have that effect. And we saw it here. 
So John gave it a 7.5, 8 out of 10. That's kind of in the same range I am. Drew, any particular thoughts to sway you out of that range from John and I? No, I think that's that's pretty spot on. It was, I wasn't as disappointed with the ending. I, I mean, I'm you know as a, a Marvel fan, I always like there to be something extra at the end that you don't know what it's going to be. So I was a little sad that there wasn't a one more thing. Um, but I didn't mind it. It's... It's funny, I know we do a very good job of having the latest and greatest in leaks and tips and things ahead of time, but I completely missed that that trailer leaked earlier. Um, I knew I knew that they were remaking it. Uh, that part I did know, but I missed that the trailer leaked. So getting to see that and getting to hear them talk about it, that was all new to me. So that's why I don't, I don't think it disappointed me at, this, at the same level, but... It could have done a little more hype at the end. I just didn't mind it. So I think a 7.5 or 8 is fine. Plenty of good surprises and a lot of good stuff there. And great programming, as Jeff always does. And I'm just grateful that he exists. Absolutely. Great stuff there. And with that, guys, we'll wrap up our Summer Game Fest coverage for the main kickoff show. We'll just drive a little bit our way into the schedule, talk about a few of the events to come, do some predictions, and then wrap up tonight's show. Again, thanks for joining us, everyone, tonight on the Level Up Live special edition for Summer Game Fest. Looking ahead to the schedule to come, guys, we've seen a lot. We've had a state of play. We've had a Sonic Central. We've had another Sega kickoff. Uh, we've had the Modern Warfare trailer reveal and now the campaign reveal today. We had Summer Game Fest. We had Devolver Digital, who is absolutely amazing, and you guys should go back and watch that one. Some really cool stuff here and there. The Day of the Devs, diving into indie games with Tim Schafer over at Double Fine and Psychonauts 2. But there is more to come. June 10th brings more surprises. That's tomorrow, and it's bringing the IGN Summer of Gaming Expo. We have June 10th's Netflix Geek Gaming Day. I almost broke an NDA earlier talking about that one, so we're going to keep it light, but there's going to be some shows described there in gaming. Uh, lots of cool stuff there. June 10th, the Tribeca Game Spotlight as well to wrap things up. And then over to June 11th, that Saturday, the Gorilla Collective Showcase, the Wholesome Direct as well. And then over to Sunday, the Big Behemoth, uh, the Bethesda behemoth in Xbox Bethesda. That main showcase will be on June 12th. And guys, we'll be co-streaming the three of us, John, Joey, and Drew right here once again. Uh, that co-stream kicking off, uh, John, correct me if I'm wrong, 12.45 p.m. on Sunday Eastern time. Sure, why not? There we go. And then we have the <laughs> PC game show following up after that. And then the future game show as well that same night. Then over to June 13th, there's Capcom Showcase, and it's not announced yet, but I do think a Nintendo Direct is going to slide in here uh, either on Tuesday or Wednesday before things wrap up on June 16th with Xbox and Bethesda showing their extended showcase, which is another full 90 minutes developer talk. And from what I'm hearing, everything shown will be new footage. So not old footage. It'll once again be new gameplay footage or CGI footage or whatever. So Xbox Bethesda really delivering this time around here in 2022. Not necessarily new games that weren't revealed before, Correct. though, right? Yeah, Just it'll new be looks new at them. looks at the games that were shown in the showcase, supposedly. Still exciting. Just making sure I understand. Way to set those expectations, Drew. I like that. See, you should work in like marketing or comms or something like that because that is what the gaming industry is doing right now. Everyone is saying, give us the next Elden Ring. And people are like, yo, slow your roll, Sarah Lee. Uh, let's get things back in line. And with that, uh, I saw that face, Sean, and I love it. And I'm very much going to love your predictions and expectations to come. Guys, let's take a quick brief look at the next seven days of announcements to come. Again, the biggest showcase still being Xbox Bethesda on Sunday, and that's the one we're going to dive into the most. Um, but outside of that, Drew, are there any other showcases, whether it be Capcom or the PC gaming show, outside of Xbox Bethesda, did any of these else stick out to you as ones to keep an eye out for? Um, I always like what Capcom comes up with. You know, they've been around a long time. They have a lot of great properties. They always make just fun games. So I'm always excited to see what they're working on and what they're coming out with and kind of their their aspirations and the directions that they're going. So I'll be I'll definitely be checking out what they do even if it's just as a recap. It'll be it'll be fun. And John, I know you're hyped for that Xbox Bethesda showcase. So we're going to dive right into that one. Uh, guys, we're going to start off with some questions. So we made a little prediction form for those on Discord. A number of people filled it out. And kind of just dove into some things that I've heard here and there. Uh, some I know will be there. Some I know will not be there. Other ones, I absolutely have no idea if they'll be there or not. Because Xbox has been very tight-lipped on this year's showcase. So we're going to dive into those questions. Then take a few wrap-ups on some hopes and dreams. And wrap up today's Level Up podcast. First question, John, you can start us off. 
Will Avowed gameplay be shown? Avowed is going to be that Skyrim-esque game set in the Pillars of Eternity universe by Obsidian Entertainment. A lot of people originally thinking it would drop in 2022. We haven't seen any gameplay yet. We've seen one CGI trailer as of yet. Will this be the showcase where we see Avowed gameplay? Um, yes. Why not? Um, if I'm not mistaken, that trailer was what in 2020? Yes. I believe that was 2020. Yeah. I think I, 2020 is correct. Yeah. I, I'm going to go ahead and say yes. I I, I think we will get a, a trailer um, or more information uh, in regards to this game during during the uh, showcase. I, I I definitely do think I, I put it probably close to, to 70% that we get it. Drew, over to you for a vow. So again, Pillars of Eternity is the universe. This one being worked on by Obsidian, a big game. A lot of people comparing it to Skyrim, just slightly smaller in size, uh, but a really cool game with different magic spells and swords and all of that gameplay. Will we see gameplay for Avowed? I think we finally get some good gameplay for it. Yeah, absolutely. I like to hear it. That's two yeses. Chat, feel free to play along here as well. Again, a number of you filled out the form, but a number of you live with us here tonight as well on twitch.tv forward slash OTN. The next question going out to Drew. Uh, we know John's a survival game fan, so I'm going to go with you first on this one. Grounded 1.0, the honey I shrunk your kids of games. Uh, we've seen Grounded come out with a number of updates from adding fish to the pond and birds in the sky and all these fun little critters to ride and tame. With that being said, we still don't have an official release date. Uh, this one was originally supposed to release, I believe, in 2021. Now moving halfway through 2022, do we see Grounded 1.0 get a release date here, uh, whether it be for later this year or two years down the road? Do we see a release date at all? I think we do finally see a release date for Grounded 1.0. Um, I'm afraid you're red herring me here, but I I think we've got, we've seen enough content update and there's enough people who are in this game and love this game that it's it's at a place that they can do an official 1.0 launch. John, over to you in this Bugs Life-esque game. Will we see 1.0 get announced? Not should we see it. We need to see it. Uh, this game has been in early access for almost two full years now. Uh, it has received a ton of updates. It needs to be ready to go. It needs to be launched. Uh, it needs to have that official kickoff to this game. Um yeah, I, I feel like they can't wait any longer. Uh, if, if they do, I feel like they're going to really start losing players. Wow, some yeses across the board so far in chat and on stream. Uh, with that being said, this next one might split the audience here. Diablo 4. Uh, this is a game similar to Overwatch 2 where we've heard it's been coming out for years. And we've seen very little of it so far. And Overwatch 2, the leak has moved on to it, but the players themselves still on Overwatch 1. Diablo 4, as we're moving to that second half of 2022, does it make an appearance and does it get a release date for 2022? Go ahead, John. You kick us off on this one, diving into Hell's Gates in the fiery world of Diablo. I don't trust anything that Blizzard touches at the moment. Um, do we see it in 2022? Uh, I say absolutely not. Uh, I would be absolutely shocked if we get a 2022 release date. 2023? I would say that's a little bit more uh, reasonable, uh, maybe a mid to late 2023 uh, release date. Um, but then again, who knows? It's Halo 4. Oh, not Halo 4. I'm sorry. Diablo 4. Uh, <laughs> it's right up there. Halo uh, 4 is great, too. <laughs> yeah. uh, Diablo 4, I uh, believe, originally announced at BlizzCon 2019. It's been a minute. It's uh, definitely been a while. It, th that announcement has survived an international pandemic. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, if it's, if it actually is in development, if it actually is a thing, I, I would like to see it. I, I, I would like to get a release date. I would like to get more information. I'll be completely honest. It, it's been almost three full years since its original announcement. I would not get my hopes up, but if they do announce it, it's definitely not a 2022 release. Okay, so 2023 is what we're leaning towards. And based on Drew's nodding of his head, I'm thinking 2023 as well. So I ask you, John, once again, I know you would like to see it, but does it make an appearance on Sunday Showcase? <sighs> I'm split. Um, I need a decision. <sighs> tick tock, tick tock. I'm going to go ahead and say no. 
No, we have a no on Diablo 4 making an appearance from Fiasco. Over to Walker TN15 on Twitter, by the way. Uh, Drew, what are your thoughts here on Diablo 4 making a fiery appearance at the showcase on Sunday? I think they're going to pivot and show something, even if it's just a little like graphic with the title and us coming soon or something, because Diablo Immortal has not been well received. And I think they're going to want something to get people talking in a more positive way. So I think they'll make sure there's something there. Maybe they already had something planned, but I think they're going to do something to get people talking about that and not talking about spending $10,000 on loot boxes and getting nothing for it uh, in the play to lose game that is Diablo Immortal. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I saw something like a character to max out a character in that game by spending money is something like $110,000. Uh, so for those heavy whales that like to jump into mobile games, that is definitely one for you. Uh, with that being said, this next question, I'm going to throw this one out there for Nixia in chat. Uh, Drew, we'll start with you on this one. Will a new Quake game be unveiled at Sunday Showcase? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's on Quake. thinking. That is very, I felt like you say wishful thinking, but there was a lot of confidence in your voice on that one. That is all hope. I love it. John, what are your thoughts on a new Quake game finally being unveiled? Uh, I'm going to go ahead, Drew, and turn your Hopium supply off uh, and give you uh, the tube connected to the Copium supply because it is not going to happen. <laughs> you love to see it. Unless you're a Quake fan, uh, hopefully it does appear at Sunday Showcase. That is one I do not know at the moment, so we'll keep an eye out for that one and see if it does make an appearance. Uh, Drew, I'm going to go back to you on this one because I know you're a huge fan of the series. Uh, there are rumors floating around uh, and maybe even revving up, one could say, of a Gears of War Marcus Phoenix collection set to be revealed later uh, at the showcase and released possibly later this year as well. Drew, will we see a Gears of War Marcus Phoenix collection of some name at the showcase on Sunday? I'm saying yes a lot here, and some of it is definitely wishful thinking. Like Quake, I definitely don't actually think there will be. I just would love for it to happen. Um, I think there will be a Marcus Phoenix type collection dropped remasters are the thing right now the collections are the thing right now the way that we saw the newest gears look on the series x shows what they can do with that so i think they'll that's a, that's an easy drop for them to do to make some easy money and i'll pay them for it so i, I think we see it i like it john will you be revving up your virtual chainsaw alongside us in some co-op play in a gears of war marcus phoenix collection after it's revealed this weekend or Will it not make the showcase on Sunday? Uh, Joey, when I last played Gears of War with you, how long did that last? Like, what, four games? Um, <laughs> yeah, John kept getting a red screen glitch, uh, and it wasn't from dying, surprisingly enough. It just kept glitching out. Um, unfortunately, that didn't last long. But maybe in this remake, it will last a little bit longer if it actually is a thing. Uh, Joey, I'm going to be honest. I could care less about this game, uh, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say that we we will get a trailer or more information in regards to a Marcus Phoenix Gears of War game. Like to see it. This next one's coming up fast with the speedometer clicking over 100 miles per hour. Will Horizon, or rather Forza Horizon 5, see its first DLC shown in Sunday Showcase? John, over to you to kick this one off. Yes, 100%. Almost, True. Almost positive on that. Yeah, again, easy driver for hype and happiness. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very confident that one will be dropping as well. Uh, John, back to you on this one. This one might take you a little bit longer. Uh, there's a little bit of a whip effect involved as well. Uh, Fortnite recently showed one of their new skins in the Battle Pass as Indiana Jones, and we do know a new movie is on the horizon as well as a game in development at Machine Games. Will we see that game, Indiana Jones, at the showcase on Sunday? The game or the Fortnite <laughs> uh, The uh, Fortnite version will yeah. definitely be present in one way or another, but um, the game itself for Machine Games. I would have to say yes. I mean, they're obviously with a new Indiana Jones, with more Indiana Jones content coming out, it'd be crazy not to build that hype up. I mean, it, it's marketing that title again after it's kind of been MIA for, for years. Um, I would like to say, yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's a guaranteed you would see it. I'd probably say it's probably on the upper side of 65, 70%. Yes. I like it. I like it. Uh, this next one uh, is a... F John is a big fan of this game, and I believe Drew and I are as well. I know I am. 
Uh, this one has a bear and a bird involved, guys, and it is a bear and a bird that have been around for a hot minute. Uh, originally developed by Rare and for the N64, we have Banjo-Kazooie. Will we see a new Banjo-Kazooie game announced, whether it be banjo Redui, Banjo-3E, any kind of Banjo-Kazooie appearance here outside of Smash? Go ahead, Drew, kick us off. Banjo Redui, I'm ashamed of you. Um, I mean, it's amazing, <laughs> no? <laughs> um, I think I said yes on this one when I did the survey. Um, that's another one that I think was more wishful thinking. Maybe they're working on it. Um, we saw that Crash uh, and Spyro were both, you know, coming back. So I think Slash came back. Um, so I can definitely see it, but I don't I don't know that we'll actually see it this time around. John, will the bear and the bird make an appearance on Sunday? They need to make an appearance on Sunday. They should make an appearance on Sunday. Uh, I was just recently, in fact, last night into early this morning, playing Banjo-Tooie. Uh, so, yes, I, I want them to, uh, but I do think that's going to be wishful thinking. I, My gut says, no, we won't see anything, but my heart says yes, so don't let me down. You love to see it. Absolutely. This next one pulling in a lot of confidence from our survey takers on discord.me forward slash OTN. T spans pot of luck and the like all giving this one a rating of five. Drew, your rating coming in a bit lower though. Will R2 make an appearance? Sean, I'll start with you since you are a, uh, an avid player from time to time of arc one, the original game. Will we see Vin Diesel and R2 make an appearance here on the showcase on Sunday? In game or during the announcement? Uh, will there be an announcement of any sort for Arc 2? You know, that's a great question. If there's one thing that I know about Arc and the developers of Arc is they like to take their sweet time doing everything. Um, um, the announcement trailer for Arc 2 shocked me because I was not expecting it. And I was not expecting a trailer for Arc 2 to look like that or be shown like that, especially with Vin Diesel in it. Uh, will we see... More information on Arc 2 with Vin Diesel. Mm. Even without Vin Diesel, just give me Arc 2. Do you think we see Arc 2? It's supposed yes. to be released in 2022, but we really don't, we haven't heard anything at all this year and anything yes. really last year. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, we see Arc 2. Drew, will you be riding the Arc 2 a showing on Sunday? No, I don't <laughs> think we'll see it. I don't think we'll see it. Uh, that eye roll was perfect. Okay, so we have a yes and a no. Arc 2 we'll keep an eye out for. And the last question, guys, as we get ready to wrap up today's show, will GoldenEye 007 be shadow dropped during the show? Uh, we recently saw that achievements were found in January 2022, and then the achievements eventually making their way to Xbox.com just last week. I feel like this is lining us up for some kind of GoldenEye announcement. The question is, it's coming but will it be dropped after the show on Sunday? Drew, over to you first. I think so. This is another one of those that's probably more wishful thinking than reality, but everybody loves a good shadow drop. So yeah, let's say it's going to happen. John. Please. I absolutely love GoldenEye. and I would love to play it again. Uh, I mean, I'll just hook up my N64 and play that, but I think I'm going to get different connectors for an HDMI though. Uh, but yes, uh, I would love for that. Wishful thinking says yes. It, I, I'll tell you what, I will be surprised if it actually is announced and shadow dropped. I want it to, but I am not going to get my hopes up. I have learned in life to keep your expectations right next to the ground. That way you'll never be disappointed. So I will go ahead and say no, but my heart says yes. <laughs> There you have it. John is keeping his expectations grounded 1.0 on this edition of Level Up. Uh, I'm excited. I think you guys had some great predictions throughout. I think a number of those will come true. And you guys can find out if they do by joining us on our co-stream on Sunday, kicking off 12.45 p.m. Eastern time and running through that show, diving into plenty of announcements from Xbox and Bethesda. With that being said, guys, we're coming to the end of Level Up today. We're about to eclipse that 145 mark right around where we are aiming for today. Uh, are there any final thoughts of things you want to see, whether they be first party or third party, from the Xbox Bethesda show on Sunday? Drew, I'm going to go over to you first. What are your final thoughts? And are there any of those lingering games, whether it be an IP that you want to see revived, a new game, or a game that's been announced like Fable or Perfect Dark that you want to see footage of? What are you looking forward to on Sunday, and what are those hopes and ambitions? As I just put into chat, I really hope that we get some look at Fable. 
Um, I love that series, even though I never actually played Fable 3 because I started it and I just wasn't a fan of what they were doing there. Um, moving too much away from the fantasy and into the industrial age. I wasn't a huge fan of that. But I, I spent so many hours in the first Fable and in Fable 2. And then when they redid the first Fable, I bought it again on everything that I could. Um, I really need to see some of that. And I would also just love to hear um, a little more about the next Elder Scrolls. I don't expect them to show anything, but an update would be nice uh, beyond... Even if it's just, hey, we're still working on it. Like, just to know that it's still there. I I'm excited for whatever that's going to look like. I know we have plenty before then, but please give me a little nugget. There you go. Some Fable footage, some Elder Scrolls, and more from Drew. Over to you, John. Is there anything else you're looking for? I know you're a fantasy of thieves. I think we'll probably get some kind of big update there. Uh, maybe if you want to dive into that or anything else that might be tickling your fancy on the Xbox Bethesda side. Yeah, Sea of Thieves would be great. Um more content there, more updates of what's coming along. Uh, right now, I know they have a great PvE story currently going uh, based upon their seasonal rotation, which I think is really, really cool. Uh, there's making a lot of uh, environment changes based upon decisions of the players uh, you know, in-game, uh, so I think that's pretty cool as well. Uh, so I definitely think we'll see a Sea of Thieves update, uh, a, a pretty big update for them. Uh, I know one I would love to see, and I understand the acquisition is not complete yet, but and I also know that there is like 0.0000000001 percent chance of this ever happening. Wow, um, this is very high. <laughs> yeah, um, I would love to see StarCraft uh, revitalized. Oh. Um, I, I understand that most of the team that worked on StarCraft has left Blizzard, and I understand that. I get that. Uh, you know, we, we, we saw the RTS game uh, in uh, Summer Game Fest uh, that is being developed by some of those same people that made StarCraft. Uh, yes, StarCraft is still technically owned by Blizzard. Yes, if that, act, if that uh, uh, acquisition goes through with Microsoft, I would love to see them uh, maybe revitalize it, maybe add more content to StarCraft 2, maybe make a StarCraft 3. I know at one point in time, Blizzard was even fiddling around with the idea of a StarCraft MMO. Um, I would love to see StarCraft, a, a game that changed the RTS genre, that changed gaming for the better. Um, I would love to see that story continue. Uh, I, and I don't have any expectation of seeing anything anytime soon with that, uh, just because of those reasons I just listed. Um but that is a pipe dream and a half that I would I would love to see one day. I would love to see that as well. StarCraft, just an amazing legendary IP. I love the co-op mode. I love the uh, the actual competitive mode, even though I felt like I was got my butt kicked in it. It was still a fun time to be had with friends. Uh, I think you will see some RTS footage potentially in this showcase on Sunday, John. Unfortunately, not StarCraft to my knowledge. Um, but again, they've kept it under wraps pretty well. So who knows what is in the works there? I will say there should be at least one Activision Blizzard reveal and it's not Call of Duty, so there should be some movement going on there. Uh, again, they have to be careful with that acquisition still in the works. They can't do too much together as of yet. Uh, racing fans, Forza Motorsport 8 has been another one that's been highly anticipated. I think you will see that here. I don't know what the release date is. I'm thinking it's still 2022, um, but we should see some footage of that. Al uh, Avalanche is contraband, that kind of smuggling game set in like a Southeast Asian environment. We should see gameplay for that. Um Again, I don't want to run into too many of these because I just want to touch on some of the big ones. The rest are kind of more surprise worthy. So we're going to keep those for now. And we'll talk about them during the co-stream when it eventually comes. Uh, one more that I do want to touch on, though, A Plague Tale Requiem. Guys, I love A Plague Tale. It's currently on Game Pass. Highly recommended. Amazing story. Uh, Requiem comes out later this month, and it is dropping day one on Game Pass. I believe Xbox has the marketing rights for that. So you should see that, uh, as well as another game that's intrigued John, Drew, and I, Starfield. We'll probably see some kind of Starfield action as well at this showcase. Uh, with that being said, I think we'll wrap up today's show. Uh, John, if you want to get ready to cue that music. Uh, outside of the games, there should be a couple service and hardware announcements. Again, it's going to focus mainly on games and mainly on games coming out in the next year, uh, as well as some new gameplay footage because that has been heavily requested for a lot of these games. But I think you might see some fun stuff as well from a Game Pass family plan. You play joining Game Pass and getting more of those Ubisoft titles over there and much more. Keep an eye out for those as we get ready to wrap up the show and head into a weekend full of game announcements to come. 
All right, Nation, and that will do it for this Summer Game Fest edition of Level Up Live. But before you go, head on over to patreon.com slash OTN and consider becoming a part of the Overtime Network. In return, you'll get access to exclusive content that nobody else in the world can get unless they are a part of OTN Media. If you haven't done so already, make sure you follow the show on Twitch. Catch the next episode of Level Up Live. If you listen to the show on our podcast feed, please do leave us a review if your podcatcher allows. Level Up Podcast is available on your podcatcher of choice. You just have to look us up, the Level Up Podcast, and we are there for you. We love to hear from you. In fact, we'd love to hear from everyone in our community. We have multiple ways for you to reach out to us. Joey, what are some of those ways? Absolutely, guys. Head over to Twitter first and find us at Level Up Live. That is L P Live. In addition to that, you can follow the Umbrella Company OTN Media over on Twitter and Facebook at OTN Media and on Instagram at OTN underscore media. Last but not least, hit us up with a follow, maybe even a juicy Amazon Prime, Twitch sub, whatever you want to give us over here. We appreciate it all. Twitch.tv forward slash OTN Media. Level up normally Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time. But again, the co-stream guys, all three of us on that co-stream, Xbox, Bethesda, and their game showcase on Sunday. This Sunday, 12.45 p.m. is when things kick off Eastern time. All right, it's not required, but we are demanding you to be there on Sunday, 1245 Eastern Time for that showcase for the official co-stream with the same cast of characters on your screen right now. And as always, next Thursday, June 16th for Level Up Live as we continue to cover the latest and greatest in gaming and esports news. Do your ears and eyes a favor, hit that sub and follow button to know when the next episode of Level Up Live is ready for your entertainment pleasures. We'll catch you all on Sunday or next week, depends upon when you tune in. Enjoy your weekend. Remember, be nice to your fellow gamers online. All right, knuckle crack time, boys. Are we, are we ready to do this for, for, uh, for three people? Oh, we all did it. I like when people listen. And as always, level, level up. up.